U.S. District Judge Barbara Crabb ruled the National Day of Prayer is unconstitutional, saying it's because the nature of prayer is so personal and can have such a powerful effect on a community that the government may not use its authority to try to influence an individual's decision whether and when to pray. The ruling is the result of a lawsuit filed by the Freedom From Religion Foundation, whose members claim they feel excluded, disenfranchised, and deeply insulted because they don't believe in God or prayer. Judge Crabb, a Carter appointee, agrees that it's an inherently religious exercise that serves no secular function, and in this instance, the government has taken sides on a matter that must be left to individual conscience. But those who support the day of prayer say the ruling flies in the face of America's faithful heritage. This is discrimination against the very roots and the foundations of this nation. Let's fast, pray, and say, God, from the White House to my house, give us a massive revival. Congress established the National Day of Prayer in 1952, and lawmakers with a Congressional Prayer Caucus promised they'll fight to preserve it. The issue were ruling on the legitimacy of the Declaration of Independence, which says the Creator gave us our rights, she would have ruled that document itself unconstitutional. I think this is going to be an energizing uh, event, uh, not a demoralizing one. The judge's ruling doesn't bar the event until the case is decided on appeal. In a statement to CBN News, the White House won't be changing any plans, saying, as he did last year, President Obama intends to recognize a national day of prayer, but no formal events will be at the White House. John Jessup, CBN News, Washington. And for more on what's next for the National Day of Prayer, we turn now to Jordan Seculo with the American Center for Law and Justice. The ACLJ took part in supporting the National Day of Prayer case. Uh, Jordan, what was your first reaction when you heard this ruling? Unfortunate, and of course, uh, we, we don't like the, the holding in this case. We represented 31 members of Congress, including all the GOP leadership in the House. Congressman Forbes uh, from Virginia all kind of led the charge for us in getting those members of Congress on board, also representing two Democrats. Uh, when you look through this opinion by Judge Crabb, you see she was really grasping at every straw possible uh, to declare the National Day of Prayer unconstitutional. But in our, our viewpoint, of course, the National Day of Prayer is like our, our national motto, in God we trust. It's just like the Pledge of Allegiance, including the phrase under God, all things that the Supreme Court has held are constitutional and it would survive any challenge in the court if it was to get all the way to the Supreme Court. And do you think it will? Well, listen, first the Department of Justice has to appeal it. And something interesting to point out here, Lee, is that, of course, this is Elena Kagan, someone who's been talked about. She's the Solicitor General of the United States, talked about as a possible Supreme Court nominee. She'd be appealing to the Seventh Circuit. That's Diane Wood, uh, also talked about as a potential uh, Supreme Court nominee. You've got an interesting thing here because the administration can appeal it to the Seventh Circuit, but they're the ones defending it. So if this administration uh, doesn't like it or would kind of like to put this to the side, uh, they have to defend it, but they may not do so very aggressively, and that's what we're going to watch. It may take uh, groups like the ACLJ filing very strong amicus briefs like we did in the district court uh, to keep the momentum up here. Jordan, let me just kind of repeat or paraphrase something that the judge said in her ruling. She says it, it performs no governmental function. How would you respond to that? It's part of our heritage. You know, Lee, you look through our founding documents, starting off with the Declaration of Independence, which acknowledges the inalienable rights were given by our creator and nature's God. You go to, again, of course, the, 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 what we're talking about here, of course, in the Constitution itself is that Congress shall not establish a religion. And what the Founding Fathers were looking to was what happened in England with the establishment of the Church of England and the wars that began between the Church of England, different Protestant branches, and of course the Catholic Church as well. They didn't want that to happen in the United States. That's what the Constitution's about. And having a national day of prayer, just like having a national motto that says, in God we trust, is not violating right. the Establishment Clause. It's not establishing a religion. Hey, Jordan, uh, this year's National Day of Prayer Breakfast is next month, in fact. Will this ruling have a chilling effect on, on the next event? You know, what's interesting here is President Obama went for it. He actually took to Twitter right away and said, uh, sent out a tweet that said, don't worry, where he's going to still be issuing the proclamation. But he has changed something. President Bush used to host an official event at the White House, and President Obama is not going to be doing that again uh, this year. He's gotten some criticism from that. People are a little riled up. I think that's why he actually uh, took to using something like Twitter yesterday to immediately say he'd be issuing that proclamation again, but he has not been as involved as presidents in the past. Jordan Seculo from the ACLJ. Jordan, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for having me.